What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chig coming at you with version two of Twisting Blades, where we are using some Ubers and messing some stuff around to make it work a little bit different. Before we get started, though, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's jump right into it. So, first things first, the talent board changes up quite a bit. Um, for starters, we're wearing the Harlequin Crest, so we are getting four stats to everything, and it's amazing. So, we're going to grab Puncture into enhanced puncture to get the cc or not the cc but the extra energy my bad and then we're going to get the fundamental puncture for vulnerable um we have something else in the build giving us vulnerable too because we're not using puncture nearly as much in this particular version of the build we're grabbing twisting blades as you can see combo points are showing up there because i'm going to be using combo points here once your gear is better you can drop combo points and go to inner sight using enhanced twisting blades, increased damage, and then improved twisting blades. Enemies are dazed when they are impaled. Three points in the sturdy for close damage reduction. Three points in the siphoning strikes for a chance to get some HP back when you hit something in melee. One point in the caltrips. Our enhanced caltrips, we have a ton of durations. So we're up to 83%. And then disciplined caltrips to get the enhanced critical strike chance. One point in the rapid gambits to get our evade back quicker. One point in the trick attacks to get um, knocking down dazed enemies, as it were. So let's go ahead and hop down to the defensives. Dark Shroud, as always, we want to have as many stacks of this as we can. I currently get 12.8% damage reduction per stack. Dark Shroud has 14% chance not to be consumed. And then you get percent crit chance while there are two or more active. You can get the movement speed if you want the movement speed, whatever works for you. Then we are going to get 3 out of 3 in Exploit, increase damage to healthy and vulnerable enemies. 3 out of 3 in Malice, increase the vulnerable enemies, and we're always making the vulnerable. We are maxing out Poison Imbuement into Enhanced Poison Imbuement to get the increased duration, and then Blended Poison Imbuement to get increased damage when we crit, because we're going to have a lot of crit chance on this build. Precision Imbuement, more crit on our imbued skills. 3 out of 3 in Deadly Venom to get increased poison damage. 3 out of 3 in Debilitating Doxins to take less damage from poison enemies. And then we're going to get 3 out of 3 in Frigid Finesse. As you can see, I have 8 out of 3 because I have a decent neck for this build. Huzzah! Then we're going to put 1 out of 3 in Adrenaline Rush to pick up Haste, which is going to give us increased movement speed when above 50% energy and increased um, attack speed when we're below 50%. And then we are scaling our damage with Close Quarters Combat. So, Paragon. This is the same as the other build. We're just scaling it using, you know, uniques now. I'm going to give you the spiel. Get the things you need in the Paragon boards as long as you're activating the glyphs. Get the things your build needs to make your build more smooth, working how you need it. Get your defensives, etc. Get what you need in your Paragon board. All right. Hop right into it. Get versatility first. Non-basic, non-core skills deal increased damage. That is going to be our imbuement. Then we are hopping into the exploit weakness board, which is going to give us increased uh, damage when we hit vulnerable enemies. They're always vulnerable, up to 25%. On this board, we are going to get tracker because tracker is going to give us 40% increased poison damage effect length. So just 40% more DPS, period. And then we do increase damage to poisoned enemies. We hop over here. We grab Eldritch Bounty. We deal 20% increased damage on our imbuements when we attack with an imbued skill, which is all the time. So we want that. We are using the Control Glyph here to get increased damage to crowd control enemies. We deal increased damage to chilled and frozen enemies. It's amazing. Then we are going to move up into the Cheap Shot board. We deal increased damage to crowd control enemies up to 25%. We have Exploit here to just go ahead and give us Vulnerable as soon as we hit them. And some increased Vulnerable damage. We're going to move over to the Deadly Ambush board, which we are not getting. We're just using this to get the Bane Glyph, which is going to give us a 15% chance to deal double the amount of damage over the duration of our poison and increase poison damage. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have the No Witness board, which we are not getting. We are just putting the Efficacy Glyph here. It is just making our Imbuement skills have increased potency, just 20% more damage on our Imbuement skills. Again, don't forget, you are just getting the Glyphs activated and getting the points you need. If you need more HP, if you need more 
potion healing if you need more health if you need more resistances get what you need more of not what my board says you need because this board is for my gear all right let's look at the gear next bang firstly harlequin crest you can in fact put an andariel's visage here if you would like i'm actually gonna hop back and forth but i'm trying to kind of stick to what woody joe was talking about and show you guys what he has come up with and that's where we're at with that it's going to give us some resource cost or resource generation it's going to give us some cooldown reduction it's going to give us small stats it's going to give us some damage and it's going to give us plus four to all of our abilities which is amazing then we've got the umbrus aspect on the chest which is going to give us critical strikes have a chance to give us dark shroud which is our biggest thing for defense we have energy per second here because we need all the energy we can get we have shadow resistance because i needed it i have this tempered for poison resistance because i needed it we're going to get a chance to cc here and we want to make sure we have plus dark shroud levels on our chest piece so retribution we have the chance to stun distant enemies but more importantly we're going to deal damage to stunned enemies or knocked down enemies here you want to have attack speed crit strike chance and twisting blades levels i wish i had more twisting blades levels i do not you want to roll a chance to cc and crowd control enemies here uh damage to crowd controlled enemies on your pants defensives 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 and you want a chance to crowd control here whichever one and then basic skills are going to give us increased damage reduction so we're stacking damage reduction in a couple different places on your boots, you want movement speed and movement speed and all of the movement speed, and you also want them to be defensive. Then you want a chance to CC on these as well. We're using shared misery to make our CCs spread around as we're running through the rift. Here we have the blade dancers aspect, which is just gonna make the twisting blades rotate around us for a little bit. This is just gonna stack our poisons a little better. You wanna have dex, max life, damage, Damage to crowd control, chance for puncture to cast twice. Once you get enough to where you don't use combo points, so right now we're using combo points. Once you get good enough gear, you can switch to inner sight. Once you switch to inner sight, switch to a weapon that has increased couch trip duration instead of chance to cast twice, because there's no reason to need it to cast twice. My gear's not that good yet. Over here, we have Blade of the Elements. We have couch trip duration, damage to crowd controlled. We also have it rolled damage max life dex, exactly what we need. We have a curse touch. This is going to give us a lucky hit chance to make things vulnerable. We want them to be vulnerable all the time. This also has couch ups duration, damage to crowd control of enemies, damage max life dex. Ring of Starless Skies is uber number two that you need for this. It's just going to give us lucky hit chance, extra damage, extra damage, resource cost reduction, extra damage, socket these for resistances that you need. Then we're going to have Bursting Venoms, which is just going to have the chance to put the pool on the ground and reset our Poison Imbuement, which is something we struggle with here. We need more Poison Imbuements. So here you're going to roll this to have extra Poison Imbue, and you're also going to have it to have extra damage to crowd control enemies, and you want Crit Dex Attack Speed. So this one's pretty much exactly what we need. And then on our neck here, um, you ideally want Frigid Finesse and the venom passive instead of crit with movement speed but you want also poison imbue and you also want damage to crowd control enemies so my neck's pretty good here that is the gear we're using the corruption aspect here to make our imbuement skills do more damage to vulnerable enemies and then like i said we're using bursting venoms here my stats defense capped i'm using hp gems because i'm a little squishy what you can do is use a elixir of hold on you can use an elixir of the resourcefulness to get your resource cost reduction down that's what i'm going to do for this one just to kind of show you what's going on so i'm going to do a 91 this is 10 higher than the other one but I didn't master work my gear any further, so my gear is still dog water like it was in the last one. But I want to show you that this build is, in fact, a lot stronger right off the rip as long as you have the correct items. So same as before, you want to be alternating. You want to use your combo points to get your damage stacked. You want to use your 
Scott's uh, ranged abilities to make sure that you get your um, Dark Shroud stacks, because if you don't have your Dark Shroud stacks, you're going to squish. So that is the thing I have been struggling with the most with this build, is keeping my Dark Shroud stacks up. So you get up your combo points, you poke them, you roll one past, combo points, combo points, combo points, poke them, roll one past. As you can see, it rolls through really, really, really chill style. You can just roll, roll, roll your boat and don't even have to worry about it because we are just deleting everything. It is awesome and having to use your um puncture in between is keeping your um stacks up on your um poison imbue because we're not spending them faster than we can because we are making sure that we are getting our combo points up which is a smooth methodical way to play the build as you get your gear better and put together better than mine, this is going to be incredibly fast. You are going to be zooming through these. You are not going to be wanting for time at all. This is a very, very strong speed setup once you get it put together properly. I am still learning how to play it again because I haven't played it in a very long time. But being able to make sure you are just rolling through and only doing as much damage as you need to to the enemies before you go to the next spot is kind of the sweet spot which you got to learn. As you can see, you know, you make sure you got them, you run on to the next, run on to the next. As long as you've got poison imbuements on your weapons, you are doing what you need to be doing. And a lot of times for like the small enemies and stuff, your rotating blades are going to take them out for you anyway. So you don't even have to worry about it. But with these kind of stacks here, you want to make sure you're kind of positioning yourself properly. And then you just run away. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to make sure I am taking my time to make sure I'm keeping up my stacks on my um, dark shroud because I'm still not super comfortable with the build but as you can see even not being super comfortable with the build I'm sure I could do 101s with this I just have not put in the time to give it a shot I have no doubts that I could do it um, mainly because I can see what I'm doing here and I'm not struggling at all um, my DPS is really good. You can see I'm taking down everything without any problems. You don't really have to think. Um, the only thing you really have to do is make sure you're pushing your poison imbue on cooldown. And everything else just kind of falls together. Because it's make sure you're standing in the right spot. Make sure you're hitting the mobs with the right abilities. And make sure you're not letting yourself get ripped in pepperoni by letting your stacks fall off. That's the biggest thing for me is letting my stacks fall off. We got the boss in just under four minutes. So it's not going to take very long to take him out. And even though he is the crappy boss, we're going to be able to rip his pepperonis pretty well. So I'm going to grab him again. Grab him again. So now that we got him CC'd, we're going to just throw everything at him. And there you go. He's down. Boom. He's going to die from dots. Easy money, easy money, easy money. We got everything we needed. There you go. See, no issues. Smooth as butter. Thick as molasses if your brain works like mine. And I'm still kind of struggling to remember how to play it. But this is the uber unique version of the Twisting Blades Rogue. And that's all you need to know to play it. Once your gear gets better, you don't have to use the combo points. You can switch over and you will be straight zooming. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you guys in the next guide and see ya.